Hey everyone, so I am at the Carter and I, you can tell I'm in a white period as far as processing. Um, last time I think we were, well, after Yarn Club, I cleaned the Carter down and I think I showed you guys some pictures in the last vlog. And once I go into white, I really try, I'm gonna turn this on, but my microphone should be just fine. So once I go into, once I go into processing white fibers after cleaning the carter out, because it takes time to open her up and clean her out and everything. So once that happens, I try to process as much of white, white that I can. Um, Cause it's the best way to keep darker fibers out of it or dyed fibers or whatever it may be. So I am currently processing, this is a BFL, so Blue Face Lester Border Lester Cross. It is really, really, sorry guys, I gotta pick something up over here. It's really beautiful fiber. Um, it has a nice softer handle to it, which the Border Lester or the Blue Face Lester is adding that to it. And then it still has a beautiful shine, which is in part due to that border lester. So I'm going to move you guys over and let you see. And I think I have to push down my fiber here pretty quick. I'm sure it's about to overload, but you can see this. I have this side open today. Yes, I am losing my fiber. You can see it's, we'll get over there. So there it's all going through and you can see I've kind of toppled out the end here. So that's all right. Generally what I can do is pretty quickly, this happens, especially because this is such a fluffy, oops, wool, um, coming out of the carter. So we're going to get that back in and then kind of, okay, so we've got it back under control. It's such a poofy fiber that if I'm not here to push it down pretty often. It likes to have a mind of its own. So here we are, and I will let you see it in more of its glory close up. It is um, a really nice fiber, a really nice fiber for beginners, although the staple length is a little bit longer. So you just have to keep your hands nice and light. Whoops. And keep your hands a little bit farther apart so you're not pinching the fibers, but it's a beauty. Hi everyone, welcome. I am Kim Beegler. I'm the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill and I'm sitting here in the mill today. I have my apron on with adorable pigs made by a friend of mine who I will make sure to get a link for um, her Etsy shop where she makes adorable, adorable aprons. Anyway, welcome everybody. And if you're new, welcome, welcome and welcome back. However you want to say that. Anyway, I am sitting here in the mill and I have had kind of a mellow week because I had a birthday. Yahoo! Always exciting. Um, and my cat Wish is sitting next to me and she's causing a ruckus. Anyway, I had a birthday. It was perfect. Um, generally, I don't get to spend a whole lot of time with Mitch on my birthday because it falls in when the grass seed farm would be fertilizing, which we are currently, but it just worked out well that he was able to hang out with me most of the day, which was awesome. I had kind of planned a day like in case he wasn't around, um, but he was around, which made it even better of a birthday. Um, but I basically just hung out around the house. I really just wanted to be in my pajamas most of the time, uh, surrounded by my spinning and my knitting and just take it super easy, be a bit disconnected from my phone and, um, just relax. So that's what I did. And we got some good food and Wish is going to come and say hi. We'll say hi. Here she is. Oh, wishy wish. There's the beast. The owner, the true owner of the mill. Okay. She wants to be on my lap. So anyway, it was a lovely birthday and, um, yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better birthday. Uh, before that I had kind of a busy Monday and Tuesday because Monday I had an interview with Capitol Press, which is kind of the Pacific Northwest 
agriculture magazine for farmers and it was exciting that they wanted to do a story on the mill so um, the article is out it's beautiful um, if you're not on my newsletter get on my newsletter I'm gonna say this again in a minute but I did share it with everybody and I also shared it on social media so I know it's on my Facebook page still probably the most recent thing because I don't post on Facebook very often but it was a really nice article and nice to be recognized in the ag world, which indeed wool mills are a part of. So um, that was awesome. And then the next day, Tuesday, I did an audio podcast. It's not out yet. I'll let you guys know when it is with Lisa Mitchell, who has a audio podcast called A Fiber Life. And it's a really just like super calm, soothing, mellow Podcast. So if you listen to audio pod podcasts, you might want to go check her out. A Fiber Life is what it's called. We had a really nice talk and um, one day soon you guys will hear that. I'll make sure to let you know. So it was a bit of extra media stuff going into my birthday, hence why I was even more ready to be a bit disconnected. So it was great. Um, on the other side of that, what I have been having a blast with is Zooming with some of my new hand spinners from the latest launch of um, the latest round of my online course. So there are, uh, I think this last week, there were about nine of us on the Zoom. We meet up once a week and just kind of go over where they're at, if they're having issues, um, just sit and talk about wool. And they all were commenting like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. The Zoom portion, because we talk, so, we just dive a lot deeper into wool and about techniques and things like that. In the course, I really try to stay focused on getting you to learn to hand spin without too much extra fluff because I don't want it to overwhelm you. Um, and that's what we get to do in the Zoom, plus kind of troubleshoot and talk about what other people have been troubleshooting or what they've done and show and tell. So I've been having so much fun with it and, um, and my students are just doing great. They're making yarn, man, so I'm loving it. Um, we also had the mill day, which was fun, and my mom made a cake, so that was exciting. Always fun to have cake, a good excuse to have cake. Um, it was a lovely group of people that came, and people came through and shopped, so thank you all of you. Um, and for those of you that sang happy birthday to me, thank you. Always appreciated, right? I'm always happy to have another birthday, always happy. Okay, so what's going on on the farm? I think I'm gonna have some farm videos for you at the end here. Sorry, wish is shedding like crazy because the weather is finally starting to shift a little bit. Whew. Anyway, um, I think I'm gonna have some videos. I actually am putting, I took a little video this morning and I am putting the um, animals to bed tonight. That's what we say. I'm gonna go put the, you know, it's kind of our evening farm chores. Mitch does them most of the time, um, or at least unharvest time, um, but he was gonna go see a movie tonight. So I'm gonna put the animals to bed. So I'm hoping to catch a little bit more, it's kind of different time of day footage for you guys. Um, we are getting so many eggs, easily a dozen a day on the egg situation. Um, and they disappear. We sell them most of the time we sell them. We obviously can't eat that many. I can eat a lot of eggs, but, um, we sell them out front and then I sell them when people come to the mill or wherever I am. So they're going pretty quick. Um, the, the girls are busy and I have a little, I know I have a little clip of them just like lined up outside. <laughs> You just can't have enough spots for them to lay. I think we probably actively have about 20 chickens that lay, maybe not every day. Some of them lay more than others. Um, we have a fair amount of chickens, um, but some of them are super retired. Some of them are partially retired. Some of them are just starting out their egg laying careers. So um, anyway, there's chickens lined up screaming everywhere at each other to get out of their box, their favorite box, I suppose. And otherwise things are good. We moved the sheep over to their favorite pasture um, because the grass is slowly starting to grow again. Yay, we've been having some daytime temperatures even into the low to mid 50s. So the actually yesterday or the day before, whenever we, Mitch and I were driving along and some uh, farmer had just turned the soil a bit and you could literally see the steam rising off of the soil because there was enough heat in the air to start to warm the soil. And Mitch was like, hurrah, hurrah. That is what we want to see because then it wakes all that grass up that's been pretty dormant, um, wakes it up. And we certainly have had enough rain. So um, time to wake up and start growing grass. And the sheep are getting more and more quiet as the grass starts to grow a little bit more. Um, so that's what's going on on the farm. I will take you there towards the end of the video so you can kind of check in on everybody. And the sheep are really plowing through some wool. They're um, getting some wool on pretty quick again. So 
Good. Okay, what I am working on. Knitting, knitting, knitting. I've been on a knitting tear. This is what I love about having multiple crafts kind of that all intertwine is that if I'm a little off on one thing, I can crank on another thing or it tends to just be something draws me in more at a certain time. Right now I'm in a kind of heavy knitting. I'm still spinning, but not spinning quite as much as I was. Part of it is I'm like in between a big project and I need to figure out what my next big project is going to be. I think I know what it's going to be at least as far as most likely it will be Shetland because I saved a few lamb fleeces that I need to get on the carter but I'm kind of in between finishing up a project. So I've got to get my spinning, got to get my spinning mojo going again, but I spin almost every day. It's just not with as much ferocity, but I am making progress on my knitting. So I thought I would show you this time where I'm at on my knitting. So I've made big progress um, on this cowl, which it's called the Hudson. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I just remembered. So here it actually is. So we, um, knit the whole thing. I Kitchener stitched it together. Everybody's favorite, right? Um, I picked up the first side of stitches here. So you can see I've got the first side and it actually wasn't as bad as I thought. I'll show you on this side because you can see a little bit better. Um, it actually wasn't that bad picking up all the stitches. It was pretty simple. Uh, not so much simple. It's just how many I thought I was going to have to figure out. I think it ended up being 140 or something. But um, after the first time where I messed up, then the second time I did better. <laughs> um, so there it is. I After you picked up, then you purl a row, you knit a row, and then I bind off and do the other side. So it's coming along. I am so thrilled with the colors. And it's basically a big... Cal. It's not quite a wrap around twice, but it'll drape really nicely. Um, so that's almost done. I'm hoping I have some car time tomorrow. So I should be able to crank that sucker out tomorrow and have it done. Hurrah. That would be fun. Okay. The other thing I just wound up a skein, the next skein on my nurtured sweater, Andrea Mowry. This is the nurtured um, I thought I had bound. Oh, I did bind off. I just haven't put it on waist yarn yet. So look, two sleeves. Hurrah, hurrah. And I have enough yarn as we discussed the last time. So, and I'll pull it up so you can see the texture. Some of that's cat hair. Some of that's Shetland. <laughs> this is 100% hand spun Shetland. There's a little bit of cat hair, but there's also some lighter fibers in there that were part of the fleece. Um, so these are both done. I just need to put this one on waist yarn. And then I get to start on the body, which I'm excited about. Um, and I tried the sleeves on. I actually made them a little bit longer even than she says. I think it was 18 inches. I went a little bit longer because I don't mind rolling up sleeves if I have to. Um, but anyway, two sleeves done. Next is starting. You go from the bottom up on the body, which is why I was panicking so much if I didn't have enough yarn. But plenty of yarn. Hurrah, hurrah. So those are my knitting progress. I'm still working on my Shetland lace scarf, which I hit not, not a snafu. It actually is beautiful. I don't know why I didn't bring it. Um, I'm not sure what my next color is. There's five colors. And uh, I don't know if I have the right color in the right weight because I'm using all hand spun. So I might, that might be part of what I spin next is figuring out a slightly darker gray is what I need natural um, for the next little chunk. So that might be what I focus on to go through the stash around here. And then I'm also working on the little summer top I'm doing. So we're, we're cranking along. And tomorrow I have a bunch of car knitting. We're going up to Portland for the day. Mitch has to work on our rental and I am going to our niece's third birthday party. So I have a little car knitting time along the way and um, I'll, I'll get some stuff finished up. So that's good. Or at least make some good progress. Okay, exciting stuff happening. Here I am saying again, if you're not on my newsletter, and you want to be more part of my community, now is the time. Jump over to my website. There'll be a link. There's always a link down in the show notes, but I am getting ready. Next week, I'm going to open up my Patreon account, finally. I have been all over the place, all over the place with this. What tiers to put it at? Do I wanna do it? Do I not wanna do it? 
do I even want to do it through the Patreon platform, which I decided to do just because the platform is so beautifully already designed and easy to use for the user and for me, the creator. So I'm going with Patreon. I'm going to have four different tiers. Um, some of them are, you know, just low key. And here's the reason I'm doing Patreon. Let me, let me explain why. My point is get on the newsletter because I always, soon enough, this will change. But generally my newsletter people are the first ones because they've just taken that extra step to get on my newsletter email list. Um, they're the first ones that generally get to hear about new products and things like that. So next week, they will be the first ones to hear that my Patreon account is active and live and some of the tiers are going to have limited numbers that I can do. So just gonna leave that there. Um, get on the newsletter if you wanna get first chance to get into Patreon to a level that you may be like, woohoo, or not, I don't know. But um, also my newsletter's fun and I only send one really, I send one a week, sometimes a few more, depending on if I have like something new happening, but not very often. So I can barely get sitting at the computer to get the newsletters out, so. Um, uh, Patreon. So why am I doing Patreon? Part of it is because I just love all the community that is building up. Um, I mean, I love the fiber community in general, but I so love the people that are drawn to me and what I do. Not so much drawn to me. That sounds weird, but just, I seem to be drawing the people that are wonderful in my community. Like we just, all fit together very well. Um, and I just wanted to have another avenue for people to get into this community, basically twofold. That is part of it. The other part is that this all takes a lot of time. Um, obviously the mill takes a lot of time, taking care of my animals takes a lot. We all have things that take a lot of time, but doing the YouTube and doing the Instagram reels and the videos and all of that, takes a lot more time than you may know um, because I have to stop, right? I have to stop, I have to set up the camera, I have to get microphones on, I have to talk about what I'm doing and not have to, again, I'm just, blah, 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 blah. but it just takes a lot of time and I love sharing it with you all, I really do. And I love hearing from you all and I love the community it's building. At the same time, I still need to pay my bills. <laughs> um, and so I, I love being able to give out free content, but I also somehow it has to balance out a little bit. And so that's kind of part of the other part of why I'm getting into Patreon is to be able to take the extra time away from working in the mill or slow down enough to be able to show what I'm working on. I wanna be able to continue doing that, um, but I also have to pay my bills, like I said. So um, it's multifold why I'm doing Patreon but I've got some really fun tiers. I really have tried to mix it up. I kind of looked at what other people were doing just to get an idea of what other people were charging, all those things, right? And then I was like, but I have something really unique here in that I own this mill. So I'm just gonna leave it there, jump on, or if you're on my newsletter, keep an eye out for an email next week that says it's live. See, hasn't been that long. Okay, another train. Anyway, so that's about Patreon. For any of you that can get on there and support me and, and get into the community further, I will now say thank you and I will say thank you forever. I appreciate it. I appreciate you all. You all bring me such joy and inspiration, something I didn't know I would get so much of when I started in this. So, and if you financially cannot do it or you just don't want to do it, that's totally fine. I get it, 100% I get it. We all have budgets and ways that we need to spend our money, but. Um, if you can, it will be appreciated. So, um, there's that. What's going on at the mill? So I have a bunch of, I've been a little bit, like I said, I've been a little down this week because my birthday and I was trying to purposefully take it easy a little bit at work. Um, I had the social, the media stuff that I was working on earlier in the week and my washers hit a little snafu, um, my washing system. So Mitch had to take a part out and he's got to fix that. And I could technically still wash, but basically the issue is my washer, it's, you know, it automatically pumps water in and it's not automatically turning off. <laughs> so it just wants to keep letting water drain into my wash tub, even when it shouldn't be. Um, so small issue, mainly because I don't want it to be say um, spinning and there's water going in at the same time. We all know spinning agitation 
hot water, all those things will equal felt. So I could do it. I would just have to be super mindful to be there as some of the cycles were shifting. And I just didn't have the patience for that this week. But next week, um, if he doesn't have time yet, of course, these things happen like when they're trying to fertilize or bigger things are happening. So um, anyway, we'll be back up and running in no time. But I just kind of took advantage and was like, you know what? I'm just going to slow down. So I do have yarn club videos um, because yarn club went out and it was gone almost quickly. I sent an email to my yarn clubbers and said, I have about six skeins left. I'm going to show it to you guys. Um, I have about six skeins left and if anybody's interested and they were gone in like 15 minutes. So here's the yarn that they got. You'll see some videos as we walk through it because the light's a little off, but basically what this was, was an 80% Suffolk. So that giant bale that I've been working on, 80% Suffolk, 20% alpaca. And the alpaca was um, black and a darker fawn color. And this is the natural beautiness that it came out with. Um, I would say it's next to skin soft for most people. That alpaca, it's lightly spun. It actually was the closest to hand spun I've been able to get off of my mill, which for me is a plus. Hopefully for my yarn club people, it was a plus too. Um, some people I know, uh, hand spun is not your thing and you want more of that, um, commercial look to your yarn. Totally fine. But for this one, um, this is how it turned out. It's really nice. And it showed by the amount, uh, by how quickly that yarn went. Um, I may try to spin up some more. We'll see. I've got just a bit of Suffolk left. I'm going to put some of it to roving and then if I have the patience, I'll spin up more of the yarn and let you guys know. But I'm going to show you guys the videos for how we got here in just a minute because I do have those. Um, and otherwise, I think I have one or two other extra carding videos or mill videos in there. So I'll pop them in here in just a minute. And maybe we'll just go watch those so you can see how this beauty was made. And um, this is all I have left. <laughs> This is what I got. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I have enough yarn to last a lifetime, but it's always funny. Um, I had to make sure I kept this so I could show it to you guys. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys watch the mill videos and then I'll be back in a minute, pretty much just to say goodbye, I think, because I think I've kind of covered what's going on and I've got to go check on the yarn that I've got dying, which is why I've got this going. So um, I'll see you guys in just a minute. Enjoy the videos. Okay, it is time for picking. And I've got the Suffolk here. Um, and this is going to be about 80% Suffolk and about 20% alpaca. And I'm opening it up pretty well. This isn't our first rodeo. I know I've brought you guys to the picker for the Suffolk before. I open it up pretty well because, and I'm gonna turn this on because I am, because the down breeds just enjoy being picked a bit and because I'm trying to pick out excess VM that is in here mostly in the form of foxtails, which I know I've shown you guys recently. So I'm just going through, I'm gonna get this batch in and then I'll grab a little batch of alpaca. So the more VM I can get out when needed, you know, if I can keep, I just keep picking along the way. Um, I'm not used to, I don't generally get like coated fleeces, so I'm used to a certain level of VM. Uh, and that's okay, you know. The sheep live outside. They're gonna have stuff in their fleeces. So you can see the two different colors here. And I'm just opening this black one, got especially kind of tangled up between um, tumbling and washing. So I'm just helping that extra with the word. If something's trying to sort of felt up or get into a knot, go the opposite way is always a general rule that I use with fiber. If it's starting to get knotted that way, start pulling that way. And you'll usually have pretty good luck getting it open if you're gonna be able to get it open. And I've got my draw frame going right now. Um, so I'm just kind of keeping an eye out on it as well. Um, and I'll take you over there in a sec after we take a peek at what's going on, what's coming out the other end of the picker. That sounded weird. 
Okay, I'll let you guys come see what's going on on the other side, and then we'll pop over to the draw frame and uh, let you see that, the draw frame. So that's going, you can see it popping out there, getting nice and blended up for me and opened up. This is what it looks like after I pulled it and then I condition it in those baskets and then it heads to the carter and we'll just pop over here and look since we're here this is coming off the draw frame and we'll pop in there and then it's starting on this side over here and I'm doing this a little bit different usually when I'm doing yarn I would do you can see there's two going in at a time two bits of roving going in and they're joining up in the machine. The two and the two. So there's two coming out the other end. Um, I usually would have three here and three there and they would join up into one roving. But because the down breeds just, they just need to be a little bit thinner, the roving when it gets to the spinner. So I'm starting here instead of doing three, I'm doing two. Um, and that makes the roving a little bit thinner and it makes the spinner a little bit more happy in the drafting process. So that's what's going on there. I'll kind of walk past. You can see what I'm talking about if you haven't seen before. Got all my goodies on top here. But you can see them, the two joining together there. And then they come out. Instead of four, we have two. And this I'll run through one more time before it goes into be spun. See you in a minute. Hey everyone, I'm back in the mill and I was just gonna show you on a day when things are going well. I'm gonna, we have got wool carding and I should show you cause this is actually the wool for yarn club, the Suffolk and Alpaca and I am so thrilled with how the yarn has turned out. Like I couldn't be happier with how the yarn has turned out. So here is the fiber coming out on this. It really is like the Suffolk has, I found a happy place for the Suffolk. Anyway, so that machine is going. We have got the draw frame going and it's just finishing up here. I'm gonna push it down a little bit while we're here. Just so it doesn't back up, which tends to happen sometimes. And if it backs up, it can make a really big mess. So I have got my washer going in the back. And back here, I have got some Romney washing. We can pop in. I, think I have enough time that I can pop in. So first round of some Romney wool going white, natural white there. And the last thing is that the spinner is going and I still have time to pop over here and we'll check in on the spinner in a minute, but spinner is flying today and then it will be spinning again in a little bit. So, okay, I just wanted you to see when things are running smoothly, how much I can be doing, because I get this question quite a bit, how much I can be doing at one time. And it's quite a bit. I just have to keep moving. Okay, see you guys in a minute. Okay, you all, so I am loading up the spinner here, getting the last bobbin loaded up. And this is Yarn Club. We will have all, all goes well, all, sorry, I'm probably right up in your face there, guys. Uh, all eight bobbins going. Sometimes one doesn't exist well and we only have less than eight going, but and that's just sometimes, sometimes one just doesn't want to spin the fiber well, but we're hoping that for this fiber, all will spin well. It has been up to this point. So we've got our last one that I just wanted to 
And I am going to not forget to do this. Um, I'm gonna put some music on so you don't have to hear this guy running. All right, see you guys in, on the other end. Come tearing. There's the stragglers come running down the hill. They crack me up every morning. Everybody else is waiting patiently or less patiently. This is what they live for every morning. Scratch around after I get their treats out. All right, we're gonna go feed some pigs. All right, we're here with the piggies. The piggies are ready to eat. Are you ready, mister? Are you ready? They're like, please let us eat. They're so patient, so patient. Breakfast time. They're so excited and they eat so slow. It's kind of funny. Got myself stuck. There's Frankie. They're like, where's all the good stuff? I didn't have all the veggies this morning, so tomorrow. Oh, and you can see, you see up there? This is a new laying spot for the hens. We just found it. Well, they've used it periodically, but this year it's game on. They go in between the wall and the board of that feeder. <laughs> See her little head there. <laughs> so sneaky. Okay, onward. Okay, it's evening time and we're going down to do chores. It's a little earlier. I think it's a little after seven. And they'll be excited because I am I do them a little earlier than Mitch. Because I want to go eat and sit down for the day. <laughs> Alright, let me flip and you'll know. Quiet at least for the moment. The 
this morning when I went to get hay for them. They ate for like a minute and they were like, Meh, we're full. And then they wandered off to go eat pasture. So that is great because hay is not the cheapest thing these days. Here we've got a rogue chicken. Sometimes the chickens linger. Most of them are already in bed at this point. Some of them go to bed at like four. <laughs> Some of our older ones, you'll go in there at like four and if there's the hint of dark and they're like, it's raining. They have a nice covered space. All right, I'm gonna go feed some pigs first actually. Well, I'm here. We'll go ahead and put June's food down since she's talking to me. Everybody's gonna start talking, but I can hear I hear pigs. There's everybody. Everybody's talking for dinner. <laughs> There's Junebug. There's Junebug. Hi, June. You ready? You ready? So, let me get her set up. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, she's got her kibble. Cuddlebug wants to know where his kibble is. He does not get kibble at night. And of course, the sheep are like, see them over there. They're like, if you want to give us hay. There's Alma. Khaleesi. Madrona's over there. Lakshmi's probably around the corner. So, I'm gonna keep moving along. We're gonna go find the pigs. Alright, we're going in. You can see some eggs in this spot. This is like so many random spots we have. And we will view of chicken poop. There's a couple girls. We've seen them before. Our rogers that beat their own drummer. There's always a few that have to roost up here. I do not know why. I'll pop in there and you can see all them. And here's the piggles that were just screaming their little hearts out. And actually, here they are, put a little light on. They were just screaming, they're like, is it time? Are you guys hungry? Are you hungry? <laughs> there they are. All right, let's feed you. Okay, here we are going into the coop and you can see pretty well. I'm not gonna turn a light on because they're all over the place. Up along the walls. Any place they can find. And I'm gonna. This is this little spot that Mitch built here. And they're just everywhere. So I'm just here to pull eggs, which there's quite a few of. So I probably should have bought the basket. I'm gonna have to put the phone down, but you can see there's six eggs in there, which is great. Actually, laying in their box. Okay. Okay, so these guys get a little bit of hay tonight. Just kind of a couple piles down there. Uh, I know, Bubby. He's like, I was just uh, in the minerals. I can tell he's got minerals on his face. So, and they're like, eh, we don't really want to be in the rain. It's a rough life. That's Alexis just staring at me while eating. It's a hard life. It's a hard life. Okay, I'm going to move on and finish so I can go in and eat dinner too. Okay, we're done. And these guys are like, let's go. Somebody's stopping here. For the most part, they're like, yeah, we're not that hungry. We don't want to stand in the rain. Mm. So, anyway, I thought I'd show you too. This is our haul for the evening. I think I got maybe two or three more this morning. So, another dozen eggs. All right, everybody, I'll see you in a minute. I'm gonna go get dry. 
Okay, that reminds me, I didn't show you guys some of the lovely white roving that I have available and um, my yarn looks good, you guys, by the way, I went and checked on it in the break. So while you were watching those videos, I checked on the yarn I'm dying up for somebody and it looks beautiful. So, um, and it got really dark. I had to turn the overhead light on because the rain is back. So much rain. Okay, so just really quickly, I wanted to show you. So uh, I think it was in the last vlog, I talked about how I had cleaned the carter out because I was switching back to white. I ran white Shetland, which is restocked in the online shop. Some, some of our white Shetland is, there's still a bit more of it and it's been restocked in the online shop. So if you're interested in that, jump over there. I also have, and I forgot it. Let me grab it for you all. Uh, in one of the videos, I think the beginning video, I talked about, or I showed some blue face Lester, border Lester cross wool. And you saw it in there. I spun just a tiny bit of it. I actually did a little Instagram video with it, doing some long draw. Woo, it's beautiful. So um, there's some of this, some, and the reason I'm doing so much white is kind of obvious, right? I cleaned the carter down. You start back at white and then I'm trying to crank all the white out because once I start to add other colors in, or even if I start adding like a light gray in or a fiber with a little more hair in, the chances of it staying out of white without me cleaning the carter again, it's very hit and miss. Sometimes I can get away with it depending on the fiber that I was processing, but a lot of times those little dark fibers fall into the white if I try to go back. So I try to crank through as much white as I possibly can before I start to add in like light grays and things. So um, there is some Shetland in natural color white. There is some blue face luster, border luster cross, which is lovely. There is some pure border luster in there. And there is also, which I honestly don't even know if I've ever run before, some just natural white Romney. I did it this time because it is perfect for learning to spin or learning to do long draw, which my course is coming up pretty soon. So I basically am trying to do a bunch of naturals um, with nice, good wools for beginners. And this Romney is pretty spectacular. You can see how lovely and light it is. And I cannot tell you how much a good light loose, I should say, is kind of the idea. Roving makes a difference when you're learning to spin or especially, especially learning to spin long draw. So anyway, if you like the natural colored whites, I basically have Romney, Suffolk, I just restocked, Shetland, I just restocked, BFL, Border Luster, and Border Luster. So jump on there and get some. Um, if you're thinking about taking the long draw class, you might want to jump on and get some too. Um, because that's going to come out in the next couple of weeks and I will scream from the mountaintops. Please, please don't use wool top when you are trying to learn to spin hand draw. A nice loose roving or if you're going to process that at home, that's going to be a great option too. Anyway, so there's lots of natural whites in my, you know what, and if you don't like, you can always spin them and dye them afterwards. So, um, if you think it's not, it's fine to spin, but you don't want to work with that color, there you go. Okay, giveaway, 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 giveaway. I have got, I've got another, like I can do easily one more batch of just like a fiber sampler pack, which is what I did, I think the last winter, um, a fiber sampler pack. So generally I do about an ounce of each of four different fibers. So I have got that for the winner who wants fiber and the Jacob yarn that from the last time the person was a fiber person. So I gave them fiber. So that skein of Jacob yarn is still up for this winter. I figured a good lead question would be, what's your perfect birthday look like? Like for me, for this year, it was chillaxing at home and just being at home and surrounded by all these things that I love <laughs> to do craft wise. But what's your perfect birthday celebration? I'll say for this year, for this year, what would your perfect birthday celebration be? Um, Cause I know it can change from year to year. Uh, so go ahead and comment below or comment about anything else. Ask me a question, whatever, but there's a lead for you if you want to think about what your perfect birthday would be like. And um, I think that's all I've got you guys. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Jump over to my news, to my website and get on the newsletter if you are interested in getting updates 
and definitely about getting an update for the Patreon. Um, if you like my vlog, please subscribe, um, comment, give it a thumbs up, all the things, tell your friends, your family. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all do do. I hope you all have a wonderful, what, maybe two weeks until I see you again. Be kind to your neighbors, to all the people, and um, make so many pretty things. I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching.